Hey guys, Nick here. Just heads up, there's some mature language in this episode. Wanted to give you a fair warning. All right, let's get to it. Hey, welcome to Myron Details. I'm Nick. I'm James. I'm Joey. And we are three industrial designers across the country. Sweating the small stuff. Woo! Welcome, Joey. <laughs> Thank you. What was that? It's like, great to be my, here. I was like, Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, Nick is dying. <laughs> I'm dying. It's okay. Oh, man. I'm sorry. Well, welcome. We're super happy <laughs> to have you on the podcast, Joey. Thank you. It's great to be here. Um, yes, we have Joey, Joey Zeldon on the podcast, and he has a long list of amazing achievements working in footwear and consulting smart design uh designed a lot of furniture for steel case and yeah very accomplished designers has been featured at on core 77 to time magazine so we're we're super happy to have you on and thanks for joining us thank you thanks for having me i'm uh blessed to be here yeah so yeah how, how you been are you you're right. up in new york for some business or I am, and I have to put on my glasses. Okay. I, I can't see you. I can't see you. I thought I was going to make that work, but it, it's not going to happen. Okay. So. That's fair. Okay. Now I can see you. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I'm here uh, pushing my, my latest, well, not latest, um, my one of my creations, uh, a co-check chair, it's called, a uh, chair made of hangers. Yeah. Um, that was kind of a, <clears throat> a cult classic back from... 2010, I think it, it kind of went viral at that time. Yeah. Oh, whatever, I, whatever viral. I feel like means. I remember it going viral. And now, so when did you create the chair? Like, at what point in your life yeah, was yeah. that chair? So the inception was at RIT. Nice. My senior year at Rochester Institute of Technology. Mm-hmm. Uh, and yeah, it was, in, it was for my furniture design studio. And uh, I wanted to make a chair out of something that was different, you know, and and I was just like wandering target, um, the aisles before Amazon existed or yeah, maybe it was shit. Okay. I'm getting old. (laughs) Uh, and, and I was like, what can I make a chair out of? And I saw, I saw the hangers and I was like, Hmm, interesting. And, uh, and I, I did some tests and, and they actually like, I was surprised to, to find that the hangers could hold you up. Yeah, and yeah. So didn't break. and for those who are just listening, oh, yeah, it's like let's, a, uh, let's pull it up on the old internet. <laughs> James is pulling it up on his screen, but I'll describe it. It's like a uh, a tube bent tube chair mm-hmm. um, has just a profile, simple profile, and then it's sized perfectly so that you can slip a plastic coat hanger over the chair, and then it stops at the seat. And if you have like a hundred coat hangers, it creates this kind of like springy seat for you to sit exactly. in. Exactly, and um, and actually that that frame is is custom designed to fit um, plastic hangers from the container store. Okay, <laughs> specific because brand. Okay, sp- very specific. And I I like you know searched far and wide for the best hanger. Really? Yeah, and the. The container store has them, and uh, and they sell a lot of them, as far as I can tell. And and these hangers are like it's super simple, classic. No, none of those like little like tiny hooks or weird flashing. And right. It's like quality uh, manufactured in the U.S. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, this frame like is it fits very snug to these hangers. Yeah, one of the details that I love about the hanger is is what happens on the back side of it. That's mm-hmm. sort of like hanger spine yeah, yeah, all yeah the hooks the kind of like come up and yeah do this kind of cool bend but yeah i can remember seeing this design it's one of those designs where you're like oh my god that's genius like it's and and you know it's like genius in the way that it's like like if only i had tried a little bit harder <laughs> <laughs> maybe but it's it's a brilliant chair i really Thank love you. how playful it is and yeah. i mean i'm obviously a fan i'm a big chair guy and yeah, I mean, this is a this is a an awesome chair as yeah. well. Thank you. Yeah, that's a lot. I, yeah, let's maybe let's back it up a little bit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I want to hear. We want to hear your story. Want to get a little intro about you. Like, tell us about your childhood and, and how you got into ID. Yeah. Jeez. Uh, let's see. Let's let's uh, let's think back. Uh, think where did was, where did you grow up? 
So I grew up in Schenectady, New York. Okay. Nice. So I had to give that a, sh- a shout out because it's it's hard to pronounce. It's it's one of those Native American okay uh, <clears throat> names, and uh, it's 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 around Albany, New York. Um, you know, within thirty minutes of Albany, which is the capital of New York. New York City is not the capital for those <laughs> <laughs> who, uh, who have not heard that. Um, so yeah, I'm a proud upstater, um, and. Yes, Schenectady is, um, it's, it's moniker is, uh, the electric city Mm. because GE has, has had, uh, had its headquarters there for a long time. So it, GE employed a lot of my family, most of my uncles and grand, both of my grandparents. Yeah. Um, were they designers or just engineers? No, they're engineers. They were engineers. And actually from an early age, I, I decided that I wasn't going to be an engineer because I didn't like a particular uncle, and I'm not going to oh, name his okay. name. Oh, okay. Interesting. Like, interesting. Yeah. interesting. <laughs> I was like, I don't know. There was uh, that's where like my designer versus engineer conflict started. <laughs> right. It was weird. I don't even As know. As a kid, wow. I know it was bizarre. Yeah. And actually, um, I think Thomas Edison had one of his like main laboratories in Schenectady. Oh, when he was developing the light bulbs. So. Right, that's cool. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. Electric City, light bulbs, GE, Thomas mm-hmm. Edison. Yeah. It's all coming together. It feels yeah. like it's coming together. Joey yeah. Zeladon. Yes. Light bulb of an idea. <laughs> Chair with hangers. That's right. That's right. Boom. That's right. And I interned for uh, Tommy. We called him <laughs> <back in. laughs> Tommy. How old are you? It was kind of. A, you interned for Thomas Edison. It's <laughs> <laughs> kind of a kook. Oh man. Uh, no, he's a good guy. <laughs> <laughs> Joey Zeldon, a young 175 years old. <laughs> oh my god! Oh man! So, uh, so Joey, you yeah, you were back grew, on track. Grew up on up in upstate. Yep. Uh, like, when did you start getting into industrial design? Like, where did you first hear about it? We always like to hear that story. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I was. So I've always been obsessed with shoes. I was one mm. of those ID narratives, I guess. You know, there's every class has like a shoe. The shoe guy. Yeah or girl and, and, or car guy or girl. Um, and, and so I, I was obsessed with like, you know, going shoe shopping with my mom and and going to Foot Locker and the mall where like in the nineties, I mean, that was, I guess, commonplace, right? Like nowadays it's Amazon, I suppose. Or I'm sure there's some malls that yeah. exist. I mean, I, the only way I can get shoes that fit if, is if I go to Nordstrom Rack and uh, <laughs> crawl into the freak bin. Uh, James has very large feet, yeah. yes. <laughs> but those, that's back in... So what what time period? With, with, has it been the 90s or early yeah, was, 90s? I think it was the early 90s. So yeah. dad, dad shoes? Dad shoes were in and they're that's back right. again. Oh. That's right. And malls were popping. I bet malls they were really like, were like the <laughs> lit. Place I used to, to hang outside of like you know Spencer's Gifts yeah. like, and uh, Hot Topic. No, Hot Topic wasn't around until late nineties. Yeah, maybe. you hung around until they opened it up. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'd get my belly button pierced. That uh, what is it? The Claire's. Claire's. <laughs> no, just kidding. <laughs> I wanted to. I'll, I'll, I feel like I feel like all your younger listeners are gonna start. <laughs> yeah, about. they're like, okay, old folks. I know, I know. Okay, okay, back on track, back on track. Okay, so I was but obsessed you, with in, shoes. You're into shoes. I would go. Yeah. I, I remember so vividly. I would go into the sh- the the Foot Lockers and like pick up, you know, the Air Jordans or oh, maybe yeah. stuff Tulo was designing. Yeah, you know, uh, back in his day, and and I was. Love the smell of the off gas of the EVA midsole. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Like, I l- fucking loved it. And I wouldn't even care. My mom would get all embarrassed and she'd be like, Joey, put that down. <laughs> oh my God. It was, uh, it was so delicious. <laughs> I just imagine this little kid running around and just. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, you know, like. <laughs> yeah, it was so great. And I didn't, I didn't know what that smell was, but it was. You know, at the time it was magic, but now I know it's like not good. Yes, <laughs> it's cancer now. Uh, That's amazing. So, so I, so I was like obsessed with drawing shoes, right? And, and it, it was like I was around like ten years old when, roughly, when all of the, this was happening, and uh, and there was a certain point actually that I <clears throat> um, wrote a letter to Nike uh, <laughs> at I think it was ten years old asking um if if they would be interested in uh shoe design that i i drew up 
Wow. wow. Yeah, for, uh, I think it was Air Jordan or Air Griffey, you know, Ken Griffey Jr. from the Seattle Mariners. He was right. big back then, 94, right. I think. Um, and I brought it into a local Foot Locker in upstate New York. And and the guy was pretty nice. Like, he said, sure, I'll 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 mail it for you, you know? <laughs> You're like, and here's my letter to Santa Claus. Yeah, exactly. And I was like, yeah, make sure they they see. <laughs> you make gave sure, him the spec. Yeah, the spec. Uh-huh. Make sure they see the design. You know, make sure he sees like the fact that I put ten Nike swooshes on this design. You know, like. <laughs> Do you have a the, photo of this somewhere? No, I oh, don't. Darn. I really oh, wish man. I did, and I never got a response. I never oh, heard anything. Yeah. Fools, right? Yeah, I know. Tigger Hatfield saw the drawing and was like, <laughs> "This kid's gonna take my job." Oh my god! <laughs> uh, so, anyways, that was that's where it started, and, I, and then I think it was uh, fourteen or so. I was in middle school, or no, maybe it was ninth grade. My my uncle, um, who I was visiting at the time in um, San Jose, California, asked me, "You know, Joey, what do you want to be when you grow up, and what do you want to do? What do you want to study mm. at, at university?" And I told him, uh, you know, a product designer, I think, is um, is what I've heard it called. And and I, I want to be, I told him, I want to be a shoe designer at Nike. Mm. And he said, well, let's go on their website and see, um, you know, see what it takes or see what the job, you know, requires. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and and it said on there, like, for a entry-level shoe designer, like, you know, must-have industrial design um, degree and that was the first time that i saw industrial design and i was mm. like huh wow okay well that's what i'm that's what i'm going to study that's so cool that's awesome was this is the good uncle <laughs> yeah he was okay actually uncle-in-law he was from okay. he was from another family <laughs> <laughs> the same family that's cool so and then you went to rit to study correct that's right yeah okay and i guess that's close by if you're in upstate new york right yeah it's uh it's three hours north from where i grew up okay and how how was your time there i mean obviously we just mentioned the chair that you designed for your thesis but tell mm-hmm. us a little, i don't know a little bit about what how, what you enjoyed or mm-hmm. yeah did uh, you have any internships i did well? i did i had two internships i i interned um well first of all i, I studied there from 2002 to 2006 mm. so that dates me uh that's okay <laughs> that's okay <laughs> we all age together <laughs> You'll be old too someday. <laughs> uh, yeah. So so during that time, I, I well, I, ma- I made it very clear to my prof- professors, you know, like, hey, I I want to be a shoe designer. Like, let's make it happen, you know. Yeah. And all of my projects, I I, I spun them into one way or another into a shoe, and I was quickly pegged as like, oh, there's Joey the shoe guy, right? Mm. Um. But it was, I think it was, yeah, my, 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 the last two years of, of my time there, I, uh, the projects that I was kind of forced to work on that were not shoes, mm-hmm. I quickly realized, um, well, I guess in hindsight, right, that they were actually the more valuable projects. Mm-hmm. Uh, That's interesting. Okay. Because with the shoes, I think for me, it was like, it was a given, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't as ex- exploratory as as it as the other projects were, you know, where I was breaking new ground and, right. and learning new things. And I realized, um, well, I realized it wasn't then that I realized, but I realized once I started working as a shoe designer that I wanted to not just design shoes but design anything. Mm, and it, it, it was okay. less about it was less about the artifact and the object and more about. <clears throat> the the process of getting to something right Right. it was more about the story the narrative yeah was it the school that imbued that in you or was it a a particular professor it must it you know it must have been a combination yeah i think yeah if i had to say cool and then so you mentioned two internships yes yep so so i interned my first internship which was pivotal as you know Anyone who's got an, gotten an internship can attest to, right? Right. Like that's it's a always big, an eye opening. It's yeah, it's a big sure. deal. I mean, it's like, oh my god, this you, is really happening. You it's learn, a miracle. you learn the real world of design. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. Um, and getting it is just like, it seems like impossible, right? Um, 
Except for those uh, University of Cincinnati students. Oh, God, <laughs> don't get me started on those. God bless your souls. <laughs> you lucky bastards. <laughs> Internships every single year. Mm-hmm, yeah. Mm-hmm. So the ones I got, I had to really had to fight for it. So, right. So I got an internship with Clark's, uh, a shoe company, yeah. out of England, but um, Boston is their U.S. headquarters. I got that my, the summer of my after my sophomore year, uh, and then after my junior year, I interned at New Balance. Oh, okay. So, cool. so obviously, I was like dead set on shoe companies. Right. Made it happen. The first one was like, you know, I think the industry refers to as brown shoe. It's like not athletic. It's you know, more on the fashion right. realm. Like dress shoes. Yeah, dress shoes and lifestyle. Okay. Uh, and, and New Balance, of course, is more on the athletic. And <clears throat> actually having both of those experiences made me realize I really liked the the more traditional, like, cobbler mm. kind of side of shoe design. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. More than the athletic. The re- I feel like a yeah. lot of shoe designers prefer the athletic the dad shoe look right. the mm-hmm. nike the adidas i don't i don't hear about a, a bunch of students enjoying the the traditional shoes yeah the the reason is that what i learned at the time is that um the lasts that they use lasts are um you know the the form of the human foot that the shoe is right designed it's around. like the wooden wooden shell yeah. or wooden well, mold it could, could be wood or plastic right. or whatever yeah. Exactly. Right. Um, you know, the sa- it's like the same idea as like fashion designers design clothing around the bust or whatever. Right. right. Um, so with with athletic, the athletic industry, a lot of times they just re- reuse the same last. Mm. And they're just every season is just kind of like cake decorating. Um, and that's right. almost, I mean, even saying that, apologies to, <laughs> to, those, to those. Yeah, I think we just lost 100 listeners. I'm sorry, you know, no, Piping it's, and out it's not, fabric and here's the thing, the and here's the thing, it's, it's, you know, I realize now that it's, it's not, right, because there's so much innovation happening in materiality, mm, right, for sure. not just the form, right, and that's, and really, it was kind of like, you know, looking back, like, wow, okay, I'm, I should have seen that, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't just about the form, mm. and I think I must have been much more form obsessed, which is why I gravitated much more to the the fashion side because every season they would mess with the toe shape of the last. Yeah. And they would make it like one, one season it's square, one season it's almond, one season it's like oblique or, you know, I mean, there's only so many th- shapes and <laughs> right ways you can <laughs> right. mess with that. Concave. Right? But, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> wrong, wrong. <laughs> My toes don't do that, James. Yeah. <laughs> Binding. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> it's coming oh, back. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I wish that my parents had bound my feet. God, <laughs> oh my I would have been shoes. able to like walk into any store and be like, "I would like to try out your newest pair of shoes, please." <laughs> I, James, a little bitter about his yeah, shoe size, just yeah, a little bit. Yeah, yeah, that's right, <laughs> but, that's right. <laughs> oh my god! But anyway, so that's that's awesome. Yeah, and you know, correct me if I'm wrong. After you graduated, those mm-hmm. internships boosted you into your full time gig, right? That's right. Yeah, I I. Uh... I lucked out and and got a full time job at Clark's mm. uh, as a professional shoe designer. So it was like it was a big deal. Nice. So, so high five, high five. <laughs> yes. My my question though is, you know, you were in school, you mm-hmm. love shoes, you even gravitated more to the traditional dress shoe, mm-hmm. this this Clark aesthetic, and then you got, a, 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 from what I hear, the dream job of a designer at Clark's. Is yeah. that correct? Yeah. Like you would... you got this job at Clark's. And you're Definitely. Like, this is it. Definitely. This is my dream. Yeah, it was. It was. Yeah, it was. At the time. At the time. At the time. That's right. And I, I didn't, I didn't know what to do with myself. You know, it was like, <laughs> this is it. I can die. <laughs> <laughs> he peaked. He peaked. Mm-hmm. I know. I know. I did. Well, yeah. Tell us about Clark's and kind of ha- what you felt about it, and I don't know how it evolved. I mean, I know that after Clark's, you went to New Balance, correct? Uh, no, continue. Oh, okay, Continuum. Oh, yeah, no, I went to New Balance after I interned at Clark's. Oh, uh, okay, okay, right. And then, and then full-time at Clark's. Okay. Yeah. So that was the realization that you would rather do the more cobbler-style shoe than the athletic was yeah. going to Clark's. Yep, yep. Sweet. So, yeah, what did you pick up from that experience at Clark's? So, yeah, I, I actually worked with um, so some of the more senior-level designers <clears throat> There at the time uh, were from 
uh, one was from Converse, and the other that I worked with for, was from Adidas. Mm-hmm. So they they found they wound up at Clark's, you know, with uh, they seemed to really enjoy it. You know, I think it was uh, kind of a sp- I mean, it's a special company, you know, it's, it's not like, uh, you know, your, your Nike or Adidas Mm -hmm. necessarily, but, um, but they're, they're known for comfort, right? They're known for, um, crafting footwear that is, is quality, right? And and really, truly designed to, um, to embrace the human foot. Um, you know, and some other shoes, sure, like their dad shoes, you know, like, Mm. I mean, there's, there's no... There's no question, but I learned a lot about even with those dad shoes, you know, the the importance of understanding what people um, care about and what they <clears throat> what they want to see on their feet, right? When they look down, mm. yeah. What, remember, what, what did what dads do, want? What yeah. did dads want? <laughs> what did yeah. dad dads want? I I will tell I you. I thought it was a tie at Christmas. Well, they definitely want <laughs> no? they definitely want those dad shoes when they get old. They want them. To get get those green stains from the lawnmower. Oh, well, the lawn. Green right. stain dad shoes. That's, That's right. a new trend. Pre green stain, green stain. <laughs> actually, statues. yes, I'm calling it right now. Next 2020 uh, fashion week, there's going to be pre stained, pre grass stained dad shoes. Oh my god! I'm calling <laughs> it right now with the smells and everything. Yes, I love the smells. With a little bit of gasoline. <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah, just because he spilled it, the, the <laughs> lawnmower overflowed a little bit. Yeah, yeah you know. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, and when you open up the shoe for the first time, you hear, "Gosh darn it!" <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. It's so true. It's all heading home. Oh but, man. But but what do yeah. but what do dads want? I don't so, know. So I think dads want comfort. For well, sure. they definitely comfort. But I remember specifically my, my the manager. Of, or my manager at the time told me, like, I was, you know, I was designing all kinds of shit that I thought, you know, I was like, oh, I wasn't even thinking about the user at the time, mm. you know, I was like, oh, look at these sweet lines, look at the curves, you right. know, and, and my manager said, well, but who, who, is this guy going to want to look down and see that, you know, and, mm. and, and I mean, really, you know, and, and so... <laughs> you know really joey yeah really and so i had to that was the first time i realized like oh my god yeah you're right i mean who is this guy that i'm designing for Mm. you know Mm, and i know we i know we we learn about that in school a little bit right we practice some of it but like this is the first time in the real world where i was really having to consider it since i was you know a professional yeah (laughs) (laughs) and so and so i had i was on a quest I was on a quest to to find out what dads wanted to see on their feet. Yeah. And it turns out they don't really want very much. Mm. You know, they don't want attention, right? They don't want right. why would they want attention down there? Yeah. And so it was like it was like anti design. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so <laughs> it's like something that's, that it's, disappears. This is kinda an exercise in it's, restraint. It is kinda interesting. Yeah. I mean when you think about dad shoes, they are almost anti design. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, so, but how did you go about getting that data? Was that talking to dads or was that just about understanding the market better through the people that were, you know, your seniors or, you know, yeah, it was, was a little bit, of, it was a little bit of, of talking to the consumer yeah. um, and just, you know, like just light research on, on the topic. You yeah. Know? Uh, and also, like going into stores and seeing what our competitors were making. <laughs> right, that's market yeah. research. Yeah. Yeah. It is. It is. You know, and yeah, what are people buying? And I think it was, you know, it's it was also just a learning process for me. Right. You know, to realize, oh my God, look, I have to design something ugly, so the people will buy it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. it does seem interesting that dad shoes are designed. Especially now, like it's the trend to design an ugly dad shoe. And it's almost like the uglier it is, the better it is. Yeah, I don't think they're ugly. I love them. <laughs> you'll you'll come into your own when you're <laughs> what is it forty or so? 40, yeah, okay. you know you realize when you're at the barbecue, <laughs> grilling up some steak <laughs> for the kids. Yeah, and that steak juice falls on your foot, and you're like, oh, it yeah. blends right in. You <laughs> don't even see it. Green grass stains and steak juice. I'm telling you. But uh, I digress. Yes. Uh, S- so how yeah. how long how long were you at Clark's and then yeah. what was that 
transition like to continuum? Yeah, because like yeah. from what you're telling me, like clerks seemed like the dream job. Yeah, it was. What, what changed and how did you evolve? So, so I was there for a year and a half or maybe closer to two years. And and I want to say I want to point out that I didn't just design dad shoes. I also <laughs> designed this is very important. I also designed really sweet shoes uh, for Clark's Originals, which is more of their um, you know classic uh, hipster, for lack of a better expression, line yeah. of shoes. You know, it's and this is like Clark, leather leather bound or like yeah, it was leather yeah. and and crepe rubber outsoles. Uh, mm, and the, right. actually, Clark's Originals is their original shoe line, mm. right? And so the Desert Boot, which <clears throat> has been super popular for the last decade, yep, there it is, um, that one was their very first design. Mm. And I think it was, no, I know it was designed for the British Army back in, oh, Jesus, I'm terrible with dates. But it was... World War Two or World War One? Oh, Jesus. Oh, we should, we, we <laughs> uh, no, 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 it was World War Z. Oh, the thing with right, the zombies. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. No, you don't want too many laces exposed because they'll, mm -hmm. they'll, uh, zombies will grab them. That's right. Yeah, yeah. so th this is just a, a pretty much classic, simple leather shoe. Super simple and just like great design. I mean. Yeah. But I, I want to stop you there for a second, Joey. How, you said you designed the next line of these? Like, how, what exactly did you yes. design? Because it seems so simplistic mm -hmm. that it doesn't really seem like there was any movement in design. So... Their, that brand is, is um, all about creating, like, spin-off or, like, you know... Uh, like variations? Yeah, variations, okay. twists on, on the, the classic originals line, okay. right? That uses um, similar materials, like the crepe uh, rubber outsole and the, yeah. the leather and the, the, the really minimalist um, upper construction. Mm -hmm. And they're always experimenting with new new ways to to keep it fresh i mean yeah. they always have so you, you like got some variations on this? i did yeah okay. and i created a line at the time this was 2008 i think um is this called, on your behance by the way yeah it is yep in here no uh in yeah here? It, is, it is a little up 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 Down. there, there it here is. yeah it's called the Ta oh. taiga series yeah so this was a, a cross between like you know originals with more of a sneaker uh, sneaker silhouette. Oh, I see. So you got a little bit more lacing on it. You have some more stitching on it. Yep. And, and the, kind of this interesting, the crepe, like the crepe was like much thinner. Oh, yeah. Okay. The, this you have also this interesting kind of a uh, heel that has, I guess, more of a woven uh, oh, stretch yeah, on, it. on the collar. Yep. It That's was, kind of nice, it was like especially a for putting it on. I feel like. yeah, it was like a sweater. Yeah. Knit right. Accent. That's great. Now, Joey, can I ask you something as we're scrolling by them? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Have you always been awesome at sketching? Oh, God. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> yeah, if this is your first job, I'm looking at these sketches right now. They're yeah. pretty crispy. I, I have to say, and 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 maybe things have, have slightly changed from here because mm -hmm. these are pretty refined, but I will say about you, Joey, that you are the king of sloppy refined sketching. <laughs> and I say that with the utmost respect because it's something that i aspire it's the pinnacle yeah that i aspire to every day huh. when i'm sketching how Looks, can you make it look <clears throat> so good but also so effortless yeah very interesting yeah huh but where where did it all begin for you were, were you uh was this a talent that you developed in school or yeah i you know i i've always been really good at drawing you yeah know, that's always been my my superpower, right? Yeah. Uh, since I was a little kid, and um, you know, it's a, it's only gotten you know better with time and practice, like anything. Um, and so I think, actually, th this one here, that's that was around the first time I started uh, digital sketching, mm. which again dates me really terribly. Um, but this was, I think, this was one of the first times I was using. Sketchbook Pro. Nice. On a Wacom Cintiq. Yeah. That Clark's had for me, right? It was one of the ones that had, like, the frame that wasn't seamless. It, like, you know, came, it broke the surface of the screen. <laughs> oh, right, like the gray the gray one, uh -huh, uh -huh. right? Where you'd uh -huh. bump into it with the pen. I, I am not familiar with this Wacom. No. <laughs> it's, uh, like, it's super old. Maybe, maybe I have to put in, like, original. But I would use Photoshop. Uh, that all of that is done in Photoshop. Um, yeah, 
uh, where is it? You know, with all the different layers, highlights. There it is. Lines. Right? Yep, there that it is. That one. You got it. You got it. Oh, yeah, classic. It might have even been older than that. But something like that. Yeah. yeah it's one of those. Yeah. No, I, re- I remember those. They they had those at my first job. Yeah. Um, But, yeah. No, I mean, it's it's a really... I remember seeing sketches of yours when I was in college because I feel like they were floating around while we were in college in the mix of, of like the sketch a day stuff oh, and, yeah. and seeing, um, I think I could actually pick out the sketch that I remember, but, um, but yeah, just being stunned at what you were able to achieve on a sketch page. Cause it was, you know, I think this was the page actually that uh, I saw in yeah. college and I was just, I was just mesmerized <laughs> by this. <laughs> yeah, this That's is another hilarious. digital sketching page. Just yeah. Full of air filters? Are these air filters? Or radios? Oh, uh, those were um, amplifiers. That was a little amplifiers. concept thing okay. I did when I was... Actually, that's when I was at Continuum. Mm. I did this just for, you know, for fun. Well, that's a great hours. segue. Oh, yeah. Let's talk about there Continuum. So, so, did you seek them? Did they seek you? How did that whole thing happen where you switched from shoe design to working at a design consultancy so yeah great question uh so first of all i i realized after like my first year at clark's that i think that was like the epiphany that i had that i didn't want to just design shoes right um and i i I want to i want to give credit to that time to of what i learned because I was able to travel to China like multiple times on projects for the shoes and that's awesome and go to the manufacturer and especially and, for your first year there. Yeah, I mean that that's something that doesn't as, as easily happen when you're in a consultancy. Yeah. No. You know, like it's it's not built into the budget, right? right. Most yeah. times or like usually it's taken on by the in-house team. Yeah. And so getting that experience was it was priceless, right? Working with with the the manufacturer on you know, for the two weeks that I was there for multiple times, um, you know, and seeing how that process worked. I mean, that was, that was priceless. So that, that's definitely like, um, you know, a great thing about working in house versus consulting. Right. That's amazing. And so you you had this epiphany, right? Oh yeah. Sorry. Thank you for bringing me back on track. (laughs) I'm an old millennial again. (laughs) So uh, have you taken your pills yet? (laughs) I did actually. Okay. Perfect. (laughs) I'm not kidding. Uh, (laughs) uh, Yeah, the epiphany was I didn't want to just be limited by uh, subject matter, right? Like, and also like imagine I was trying to imagine myself spending the rest of my career designing shoes. That's a daunting thought. It Mm -hmm. is, and I was like, oh my god, what? How am I going to do that? How like how how many deaths? How many dads do I have to save here? I mean, like, I, and, and don't get me wrong. It's like fashion. Shoes are like, it's very, it's like this interesting hybrid of like fashion and, and industrial design. For sure. Which is really interesting. And I, I love that industry for it. Um, but, you know, the really like groundbreaking um, reinvention kind of projects, you know, that um, you hear about it. At, nike or adidas um like the fly knit kind of stuff and right nike free i don't know there's just things that are popping into my head those kind of projects don't happen every day right right and so the rest of it is like okay we gotta we gotta meet the consumer demand we gotta what's the next season right right just changing colors a lot yeah yeah yeah. and and playing with pattern and things like that so i realized oh my god i don't want to do that you know i want to um I don't want to limit myself to just being a, sh- a shoe designer, right? And so um, I realized I need to, like, expand my horizons. And, mm-hmm. and, and also I think this is a realization that, like, thinking about the design process to, um, you know, where we diverge early as mm-hmm. wide and far as we can yeah. and then um, converge later, right? Yeah. I like to apply that same method to one's career. Right. Because you're able to... By doing that, you're able to like learn so many like diversify your your portfolio, right, and your skill set, mm. and then eventually converge to to a specialty or 
That's interesting. Or to something else. I like that idea. Yeah. Like applying that to your life. Mm-hmm. Like when you're young, just try as much as you can. Yeah. It's the same with dating. You know, I mean, <laughs> like, seriously, I, yeah, back, yeah, in, yeah. back in 2010s, I was online dating like crazy. Yeah. Back when it wasn't cool. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I was, man, you know, that was seriously, I was seriously diverging. Yeah. You know, if you apply that same methodology. Yeah. And, and, um, fine tuning figuring out oh personality types looks like the mix it's like you know you had all these ingredients of you know your potential mate and then yeah. and then you converge to one right yeah it's no different we're very familiar on this podcast of dating analogies i i love <laughs> i love them yeah they're <laughs> uh, but uh so so, so you applied yeah. to continue mm-hmm. yeah so I, I actually applied to uh and interviewed with three different firms around the boston area because that's where clark's was based and that's where i was based so i interviewed at 11 uh what was the other one radius and continuum and uh so the continuum one went really well and actually i had met uh the director of design at continuum at the time uh my senior year of of university at at rit at a an idsa event at one of those portfolio reviews, you know, they give, and I, and I happened to get him as a reviewer, mm-hmm. and you know, I think I can't remember exactly what I said, but it was like, you know, something like, "Hey, if 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 Continuum was ever looking for like a wild card designer, <laughs> I'm your guy." You told him, <laughs> yeah, I told and him. And then like, you jumped into your Ferrari and drove <laughs> off. <laughs> no, I said like, yeah, something something like that, like you know, like a little more like just different you know different approach yeah you know i don't know i was trying that's to amazing. It, it stuck obviously. that's and, amazing and he remembered me and yeah. and and i got the job you know <laughs> that's cool he wants some he wanted some joey <laughs> <laughs> wow that's amazing oh yeah. man so i was there for four years in boston yeah. that's a good amount of time what yeah. kind of did you work on any like what is the standout project that, you that was the first time i worked on some oxo projects really okay. yeah so they you know oxo like um, works with a lot of different firms. Okay. Yeah. Um, the kitchenware company. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and I worked on some health, healthcare products, some, uh, consumer electronics for Targus. Um, yeah, it was, it was an interesting time. I got in, I, I started at Continuum right after they had worked on the, uh, one laptop per child. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. And that was a whole like, I don't even know How, if you want Wait, to... I, I would love to know about that because it started at Continuum mm-hmm. and ended at Fuse Project, right? Correct. So what, what happened there? I did not... I, I, all I know is that Yves Bahar did it. I didn't know that it started yeah, some, see, somewhere else. Uh, yeah, well, let's clear this up. <laughs> not that anyone's going to care. <laughs> let's set he, the record let's, straight. Let's pull up an inch, too. So, so here's... Yeah. The, so, and, and, and I don't know, like, what's fact and what's fiction here, but... Um, the, like I worked with some really talented industrial designers that were part of the team that hired me uh, um, on a continuum that worked on the you know the first few phases of that design with MIT Media Lab. Yeah, and, uh, uh, and the the idea behind it was just to give a laptop to every child in what country, or is it just third more, world country? Yeah, more third of world a, countries. Yeah, make it as cheap as possible okay. and and fun. You and know, the, and they're it, and they're like. Have this rubber outer yeah make like it as shell, durable make as it possible durable. for those environments right have, they have these kind of cool flip up antennas yep yeah so and so a lot of a lot of the i like to think of it as the architecture of that design was was formed by the continuum team mm. uh, before i joined of course i didn't work on that yeah um you know people like mitch alvarez uh jung tack mitch uh, works at Drinkfinity in, in Miami. Jung works as a designer for Google. I mean, mm-hmm. these guys went on to do amazing things and, and are still doing amazing things. Right. Um, and so so the story around this was that, that I know of. Um, MIT Media Lab, you know, got together with Continuum. They worked, they worked to create, like, the first few models of this prototypes and, um, and Fuse Project. Um, and Yves Bahar at the time, you know, which was like when he was like trying to get his, his project, his Fuse project off the ground, um, snuck in. And, and I think he, he offered to work on this for, 
a significantly reduced price. Oh. Interesting. Maybe even free. That is from what I hear. That is yeah, I mean I'd love to hear his side of the story. Like what what attracted him to do that? Yeah. Like, why would I, you go to another consultancy and take away a project? Well, I think you know, I I'm mean, sure there's a lot of, there's I'm sure there's much more to the story than that. I'm just, yeah, it's, it's interesting. But I it's really no different than say like for you guys or even myself as, you know, working on my own studio, a freelancer, right? You see this really juicy project that you see the potential in it going big or it like it's like once in a lifetime project right and you want to throw your hat in the ring right yeah and so how do you compete with the big leagues yeah you do it through like undercutting price right yeah i guess like my thought is it seems like it was already started like it seems like continuum has already kind of like started the ball rolling on it Mm -hmm. i don't know that's interesting yeah yeah i don't know yeah tangent but uh yeah i'm sure there was other things like connections and yeah yeah politics who knows so so you worked at continuum for four years and you said you worked on some oxo projects i gotta say i'm my favorite product of yours is the oxo blender that you did uh-huh. and i don't know if that was at continuum or at smart no or... it was at smart okay um but yeah I, i'm a big fan of that blender i remember i was uh at, at when i was at petmate we had it as a sample really and i don't know why maybe it was just like the over molding or something about it um was unique hmm. um but i just remember like going in to work one day and like just like seeing it there and like lifting it up and was like whoa this thing is really nice i don't know i i just love the form of it it was simplistic it ha- has had this like cylindrical main body and then the handle kind of formed out of it much much simpler in uh, and I felt just more considered than a lot of other mixers on the market. Thank you. Yeah, we. So it was a it was a huge team that worked on that at Smart. Um, you know, designers like Lauren Argo and 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 uh, Jern Vic, Vicari, um, and myself. We were the three designers that worked on that, as well as um, you know a bunch of the other <clears throat> products in the line of of electrics. And that was the first time that Oxo. Um, you know, created something that plugs into the wall. Oh, this is their oh. first electric product? Yep. Wow, okay. Or this amongst, like, the coffee maker, the coffee grinder, okay. blender, mixer, uh, toaster. Yeah. So that was the, yeah, that was their first foray into into electrics. Yeah. Well, I, don't, I, don't, I also don't want to jump ahead, but mm-hmm. so this was at Smart Design, and mm-hmm. you were at Continuum. And right. How did that transition? Oh, I yeah. mean, oh, man. Well, Smart Design's in New York, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think to wrap up the Continuum portion. How are you doing you for know, time? I don't want to, like, drag oh, on here. Oh, we're, we're, we're good. How are you doing? We're made time? in the oh, same. Oh, I'm great. Okay. okay. Yeah. Um, I think, I I think the we're question good. that I would have is, um, you know, you, you went from Clark's, which was you were working on one category of project, yeah. product. Then you come to Continuum, and you're working on multiple things, like, how was that adjustment? And then what were sort of your big takeaways from Continuum? Yeah, I think I was I was really a fish out of water at Continuum when I first started. The yeah. wild card? <laughs> yeah, the wild card. <laughs> I, was a, I was a wet fish <laughs> flopping around. I, I, <laughs> and Joey, he's always wet. So <laughs> oh so dr- just with his shirt. His, he never dries his clothes. Why? Oh I don't God. know why, Joey. Oh why don't you tell us why? Oh, man. My alpha appeal is not working. <laughs> Uh, anyways, um, yeah, no, I, I, I learned so much. I mean, there's just like, I, I, I feel so fortunate to have had that experience. You know, mm. I feel like that those four years really broke me in as, as a designer, particularly in, in a consultancy, right? Like a big name consultancy. Yeah. Although Continuum, I think saw themselves as the underdog amongst the, the big four or the big three what was it IDEO and frog and Continuum. Um, mm. that's the perception that's like what I took from it yeah. being behind the scenes because they were they were all competing for the same work right um, but yeah like the the team there you know was was super talented humble um, and I learned so much they were really patient with me and and must have saw some potential in me you know to bring me on board um, yeah I, I learned I learned quite a bit um, I'm trying to think of like specific anecdotes even just like engaging with a client right like 
That's important skill. It's super important. I mean, you know, thinking about, you know, presenting your concepts to a client and and rationalizing your design decisions, right? And and I think that business model, you know, learning learning about it was really interesting to me. I think it was like I realized, you know what, geez, it's it's a lot like going to the doctor or physician and and asking them for a diagnosis or like to check you out, right? So the clients like the patient who comes mm. in and the we we as the design consultant have to be like the professional physician. Mm-hmm. That's interesting. And and you don't want to like you want to give the patient a a diagnosis and you want to be as transparent with them as possible. You also want to be professional and and represent um come across as like very uh I don't know, it's not authoritative, but like you know what you're doing. Right? right? I mean, yeah. it's super important, but you also want to be personal, right. personable, right? So it's this really interesting mix of like it's it's an art, it's an art form. Yeah. Um, and I think learning that was like super valuable at the yeah. time. Did you learn that just through experience, or was there somebody that you modeled that behavior after, or a series of people? Uh, yeah, I think a bunch of different people. Yeah, for sure. I think actually it was at it was at Smart Design that I really liked. Um, the founder of Smart, David Stoll, I heard him one time saying, like, you don't want to present your, your design concepts, like, um, or you want, you don't want the client to come in and, and see your design concepts almost like it's a, um, you know, like they're in a a Chinese restaurant, you know, seeing all of the, Mm. you know, a gazillion options. Right. Right. You need to curate it for them. Yes. And, uh, and actually, a continuum. I also learned this this technique called mild to wild, mm. which is presenting, um, you know, a range of concepts to to your client. You know, that are like sacrificial lambs, right? Huh. If you you almost need to like, it's a very like strategic way to get them to the one you believe in, right? So right. you have like you have the safe option, mm-hmm. you have the crazy option, and then you specifically design those to be maybe highlighting this one kind of all around option is that kind of Yeah, I think more often than not they us- usually go with the one in the middle. Yeah. So <laughs> I mean it is kind of it does kind of make sense. If yeah. you have like a really safe option mm-hmm. and a really crazy option, mm-hmm. well, the, those no matter how you design it, it seems like they're the outer edges. Mm-hmm. Right. That is funny because it's so, it's so often that you get like three sizes of something and you're like it's one in the middle mm-hmm. feels right, you know. I, I like that book ending with the with the mild and right. wild. Right, right. Uh, that's interesting. Yeah. Mm. So it's so if you want if you want your option chosen, just like shift the scope or shift the parameter, right? Mm. So the mild to wild can be anywhere on right. the spectrum. So, so if you want your wild idea chosen, then you make a kind of wild idea uh-huh. and then an insane yeah, idea. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> And they'll pick them. <laughs> or you can be like super, uh, I don't even know what the word is, like the pompous designer approach mm. and, and just be like, just drop it on the table and be like, right. you this know, is it. take it or leave it. <laughs> <laughs> That's a bold move. I don't know if I'd suggest that as a young designer, but <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Calling yourself the wild card. It depends. It depends on, out. it depends on who, who the client is, right? Some That's clients fair. really like that authoritative, like, oh. I believe in you. They're like, oh my. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that but designer. The the places I've worked for didn't really like that approach. Yeah. You know, they played it a little safer, yeah. more strategic. Yeah. 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 Yeah, well, I guess for a client, you don't want to come across as too unpredictable, mm-hmm. you know. That's right. So, this could be a good segue into uh research. Oh, yeah. Or unless we we had more to cover elsewhere. Well, I I think we have a few other places we want to just talk about because you know continuum you worked there a couple years oh yeah i didn't even talk about my transition yeah you went and then you went to smart design mm-hmm. well actually <laughs> no okay so so i was there for four years and i i survived two different rounds of layoffs this was during the the great recession Ooh, okay. wow uh so one in 2009 one in 2011 and i was hiding in the 
the janitor's closet <laughs> and they were like they were where's like, joey yeah, where's that kid if we, if we where's can't the, find him the wild card where's the if we kid, can't find him we can't the wildling find him. the kid he calls himself the wildling <laughs> even before uh, uh game of thrones was came out <laughs> he's just north of the wall the wall between like, accounting and <laughs> human resources oh my god somehow i survived i don't know how but yeah. that was a tough time you know and then I don't know. I okay. So um, I actually just got out of a long-term relationship, like six years, and and then like surviving like layoffs, and and I realized, you know what? I think it's time to pivot. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because I don't want to. I realized I didn't want to sur- just survive, you know, and make and just hold on to something, right? Right. Because that's that's no way to live. Mm, I mean, for sure. I felt grateful to have my job, you know, such a great job, but, um, I think it was, it was the right time. Yeah. And so, um, you know, my, my father is from Costa Rica, so that's, mm. I'm half Costa Rican. And it was always a dream of mine to, to spend time there and, and really like, and live there and, and, um, you know, improve my Spanish and, and who knows what, right. And, and so I did that. I, uh, I quit my job at Continuum. And I moved to Costa Rica for a year. Wow. Yeah. And, and you just you were just hanging out there working Yeah, so I, I um was living with a family that only spoke Spanish to help, you know, like force me to like only speak Spanish. A family or, or part of your no, family? No, a family. A family. Like yeah. that I that I hooked up with through a, a language school. Oh wow. So they so they take in you know, students who want to. <laughs> like, I'm just imagining you going up to this family and being like, I'm a wild card. <laughs> yeah. If you want a wild card mm-hmm. in this family, I'm your guy. I don't know oh if that, that phrase works for everything. No? <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, you're goofier than I am. <laughs> oh, man. But, uh, That's awesome. But anyway, you got you got connected to this family through an organization. Yeah, through a school. And, yeah. and it was great. You know, there were super great people and and i of course i visited my family like on the weekends my grandfather lives there has a a fruit farm in the country Mm. um but he he speaks english you know like more or less you know some broken english but like that's what we would default to you know so it wouldn't help me improve so i knew that so I, i forced myself into this new context yeah um and i did that for for a while and I stayed in touch with Continuum and the director, and, and there was always a, like, for the first quarter I was there, there was always a chance that I could come back, you know, and and, and continue working there. Right. That's nice. And continue yeah, it was... on working there. James. Hmm? Sorry, I'm just, I'm in a jokey <laughs> mood. I'm in a jokey mood. <laughs> Dad jokes. Oh, my yeah. God, that's good. <laughs> You're too quick for me. Yeah, um, no worries. And, um, and so I, you know, I stayed in touch, but then I realized, like, and three months isn't going to cut it. You know, I just got to, I got to stay here. Yeah. And so I told them like, I'm just going to stay here. You yeah. Know? So cool. So I just, there was no turn, you know, no turning back. Yeah. Um, and then, and then it was like six months in, I got connected with like the design culture there, which is very small. Um, but um, I got a, a teaching opportunity at a, a private school there design school called Veritas oh, okay. or Veritas University. Yeah. Um, That's cool. Yeah, and, I, and I, that was the first time I actually taught design in Spanglish. And I was, because <laughs> I was like really into using my, my newfound language, right? Right. And, uh, and, my, <laughs> and to my surprise, all of the students spoke English. <laughs> 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 and I was still trying so hard to like push like uh, try to speak in spanish and they're right. like oh no it's okay it's okay we know <laughs> you know and it's like no like let me practice <laughs> but i was th- like the class that i taught i taught like in industrial design and architecture stu- or, and fashion design students um I, w- I would teach them digital and analog sketching techniques mm, okay wow yeah so i had a uh, i had all my you know, Photoshop things like s- that stuff that you pulled up earlier, and like the brown paper sketching. Yeah, had you always been doing the brown paper sketching along with the digital? Was yeah, it- yeah. I, I learned about the brown paper in two thousand and four. 
at one yeah. of my internships. And I know you do some some airbrushing as well, right? Yeah, yeah, I, I, I enjoy the airbrushing. Super old school. Yeah, that's. I would say that that's another thing that's unique to you. I don't see a lot of airbrushers yeah. In, yeah. in the ID game. It'll come back. It'll come back, yeah. yeah. It's not very practical, but Copic makes... Uh, some version of it okay but uh because i get i get some like questions on on the gram uh from students and yeah who, who knows let's see if i can let's see if i can find one is there some brushing in here yeah i think oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> your this favorite is, this is the wheel of fortune cookies mm -hmm. and and so i i learned about this technique from uh one of the the shoe designers i was working with at clark's who yeah. used to work at Adidas, and he taught me this. That's a, so you learned the airbrushing technique at Clark's. Mm -hmm. That's cool. That's very cool. Yeah, yeah that, it was it was what like all the old school shoe designers did at Adidas at the time. Yeah, I uh, I never had I I've never done airbrushing, but when I was a kid, they came out with these cool markers, and I don't know if you ever saw these markers, but they were markers. I don't know what they're called. They were called like air markers or something, and they had a special like nozzle on the back uh, so you could you could just blow with your mouth oh i, I, don't, I know what those? you're talking about <laughs> i don't i have no clue yeah, yeah yeah yeah. i know what you're talking How, about did it increase your lung capacity how it, long can it, you hold your breath underwater if you if you sketch too much you definitely would pass out <laughs> for sure 100 <laughs> percent um but that's uh, like really old school yeah that's but, like pastel shaving style yeah you know that one yeah no, the, the pastels mm -hmm. you know, that was a that's another old school yeah. technique I, I love the and I love the post-it notes to like oh yeah to to create the border for everything. Um, but Joey, so you were in Costa Rica. You took this little mm -hmm. hiatus doing this teaching thing, and then you came back somehow. You yeah, decided, so you I, had a change of heart. Yeah, it was um, you know, nearing a year, and <clears throat> and I I wanted to get back in the game. You know. Yeah. I was ready. Yeah. Um, no, I was. It, like, I was missing it, you know, it was, it was like, it was a beautiful year in Costa Rica, but, um, I missed, you know, I missed the, I missed the rat race. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm a North American boy, you know, <laughs> work but, to the death. But like reflecting on it, did you feel like you, you needed that time in a way? Yeah, or? Did it like help rejuvenate? Yeah. I think so. Okay. Yeah. Cause I went through a lot of grieving too, with the past relationship right. and personal stuff. Right. Um, it was it was great and i like i have no regrets doing it actually i feel like i would re really regret not doing it mm. interesting yeah i think i think you know a lot of people in our society feel like any time off that scares that mm. scares them yeah a lot that I scares mean, me honestly like I, yeah. i've never taken time off since i graduated school yeah I mean, I was lucky that my parents encouraged me to take a year off before I went to college, and mm. I and I have absolutely no regrets. Maybe I'll take time off. Yeah, I mean, Stefan Sagmeister, he closes down yes, the studio exactly. every five years, and yep. I think, you know, it, that actually helped inspire me. Really? It. Yeah, I was like, oh my god, there's this guy, he knows what he's talking about. Right. Hmm. Yeah, that's otherwise, awesome. Otherwise, like, you you could work yourself through your whole career and then all of a sudden you're like middle aged or even like in your 50s 60s yeah and and you realized you look back and and it's like man what else could have could you have done right right huh yeah and and also it just seems like that time for reflection yeah. on what you've done so far mm -hmm. because it's hard to contextualize things when you're constantly moving yeah you know and and just to think back on like what were the successes, what were the failures, mm -hmm. what made them so, and then also I know with Stefan it was like he felt <clears throat> him, himself in like sort of this groove of a lot of his projects seem to be replicating mm. themselves, you know, into other work, and he felt like his ideas were stale, and so doing that year off was a, he was able to like mm. refresh that whole thing, come up you know experiment mm -hmm. every five years yeah yeah hmm. i think he might I he might have years. extended to seven yeah seven years. Okay. yeah but uh 
but yeah, no, it's it's interesting. And and did you find that? Did you did you find those kind of benefits from your time off? Oh, definitely. Yeah. yeah, it was it was super reflective and very necessary, you know, because I think my <clears throat> my style is that uh, for better or for worse, like I I dive all in into mm. something, you know. I'm not. It's you know people benefit from it like the places I've worked for benefit from it because I I like give my all right to it yeah because I don't want to fail right you know, I think it's is based on like a survival mentality right and also wanting to achieve and and you know like reach a certain level yeah you know, of of quality output yeah that you know I lose sight of uh other things yeah and so yeah sometimes i have to like pull myself out of that depth right yeah right. to to like look up and and see what else yeah that's cool yeah that's that's awesome um i think maybe it would be good to just take a quick break yeah um joey we'll take a quick break and after that we'll get back to your story but uh yeah if you guys are listening uh, thanks for listening. Of course, if you have questions, uh, email us, myrdetailspodcast at gmail.com. Joey, maybe you want to just mention where people can find your work right quick? Yeah, sure. Uh, my new website and studio, joeyzeldin.com, and uh, on Instagram at joey.zeldin. Okay. Cool. Well, we'll uh, be right back next week for part two. Yeah. And uh, pick up on the story, and then maybe talk a little bit more about like some topic and questions. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, as always, I'm at Nick P. Baker. I'm at I Draw on Receipts. I'm Joey Zeladin. <laughs> Peace out. Later. Woo!